Good morning. It's 1135 on this St. Andrew's Day. Uh, here we are in the Advent season. Um, I think you thought I probably forgot and and I, I didn't, uh, but I missed you. I hope you missed us. Uh, we'll be waiting for a couple of folks on both Facebook and um, my HT to show up and we'll get cracking on John chapter 19. Um, it's a little crazy. I, I think I had too much time off. If such a thing were possible. I think I had too much time off. Um, I literally forced myself not to come into the office on uh, the church office on uh, Thursday. But I had to for something. Friday and Saturday. So, for, I mean, for me not to go to the church office at all is a rarity. And so, um, yeah. He is running late. But he's here. We're here. So, yeah. Um, but two days in which I don't go into the church office is a rarity. Um, I go in every day. Every day. Uh, but I didn't do... For, uh, Friday and Saturday. I've got some exciting news to share with you a little later on. Um, and uh, yeah, you're going to be excited. I'm excited. I know you're going to be excited too. All right, let's get cracking, shall we? Remember, comments and thoughts, you can keep that, you can put them either in YouTube. I'm sorry, YouTube. You can put them either on Facebook Live or you can put them on um my HT, I will give the My HT comments priority uh, because that's the platform we'd like you to be using. But uh, um, we'll get to them as quickly as possible. All right, let's take a look at what we're where we're at. Uh, Jesus's words in John 11. Remember, he is standing before Pilate. He is standing before Pilate, and. Um, Uh, Pilate asks him, "Who are you?" And he and he and he doesn't answer. His 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 response is that he 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 doesn't answer. And Pilate's Pilate's take on this is, um, "Don't you know I have the the, the power to to uh, to damn you, and I have the power to I mean I have the power to to, to kill you and the power to rescue you." Um. And Jesus says, you have no power over me. You have no authority. You have no ability to do anything. Exousia is that Greek word, which means uh, authority. Um, it's literally the ability to do something. Potestatum in Latin, which is power. But this is power, not like, like, like overwhelming power, but it's the, it's, it's, you see it right down here. It's to have the right to do something. You, you wouldn't have the ability to do anything to me if that ability wasn't given to you from above. Anothen. Remember we had this word earlier in the gospel. Um, it was used in John 3. Um, you must be born anothen from above. Um, I told you that everywhere in the gospels. Hey buddy, where are you? Come here boy. I told you that everywhere in the gospels anothen is used simply to mean from above. Um, death super from above. Um, and here's a case where, get in your bed. Oops, I dropped that treat. Sorry. Fumble. Anothen, from above. So the authority to do this to me, the ability to do this to me comes from above. It comes anothen. So now we're cooking with gas. All right. We, now we know that all of this is not apart from God. This is what this is what God needs to do to save you. And needs there is not um, um we 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 do stream to both Facebook and and my HT Miss Content Executive. Um, that's what we do. Um, I hope Jean gets it working. I don't want Jean not to be able to to do her thing. Okay, so 
um, I just want you to sort of uh, just sort of take this in, just sort of have this moment with me. Um, it's not that God, I want you to understand that it's not that God, um, allows something to happen. Now that's Augustine. How could God allow this to happen? And Augustine rescues God by saying, he, he sort of allows it to happen, but he doesn't participate in it. But by his allowing it to happen, he participates in it. So that doesn't work. And what I would say is, let's sort of throw that out. That's not the way to look at it. And we talked about this a little bit on yesterday's Bible study in... in uh, um, um, in Revelation, uh, where God opens the keys, gives the keys of, of hell to, to this fallen star. And the fallen star goes to the earth and he opens the abyss because he has been given the keys. Now, um, that doesn't, that's not the way we normally think of God doing things. We don't normally think of God, um, doing those things, uh, opening hell. We don't normally think of God um, allowing stuff like that to happen. But um, it's so important to, to really sort of really sort of grasp what happen, is happening here. There's no other way to save you. There's no other way to save you. Content is talking to her mother and calling her mother by her first name. Fascinating. Um, Sandra, don't you have your own account? Or are you always just going to be known as content? I'm having fun. I hope you are too. On this Cyber Monday. Um, first, it's not that God needs anything. So when I said that God needed to do this this way, that was just me saying that there's no other way to save you. There's no other way to save me. And, and that's something to really take in in the Advent season. I know that we normally think of Advent as um, sleigh bells ring. Are you listening? And, you know, we, we sing songs in Advent. It's beginning to look a lot like Advent. You know, songs like that. And we... Um, so we, we, we sing these songs and we have these sort of um, these sort of moments where we're, 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 we're sort of bringing together and we're going to get together no matter what. I mean, um, not even in California are they going to be able to stop people from visiting one another. Um, the jig is up. Um, COVID's not going to beat Christmas. So um, you get this... Um, but you get this feeling of joy and happiness. And originally, Advent was white, uh, but um, but it quickly became violet. Because if God is coming, if He's coming in the manger, if He's coming again to judge the living and the dead, if He's coming, um, if He's coming in His gifts, we need we we are given to make ready for His coming. Uh, to prepare our lives. If I were going over to um, Mark's house, uh, Mark wouldn't just leave uh, the um, uh, the car parts that he's working on in the sink. He would clean up his house because someone important is coming. The same with God. God is coming. And so we make ready for his coming by by repentance and faith. By repenting of our sins and believing the gospel. Um, and so Advent is a great time to be doing the suffering and death of Jesus. Because, because as we prepare for his coming on Christmas, and, the, and there's great devotional materials. There's amazing devotional materials by the, um, by the uh, Reverend Brad Drew. They are absolutely amazing. And you want to get those. You want to get those. Don't doubt me on this. 
you want to get those. Uh, uh, content is going to put the website in there. Or Cindy will. Somebody will will put that. You want to get these reflections because I, I, they're amazing. I normally write the, the Advent reflections, and I just took some time off this year. I might be doing a lot. Um, and so um, we got Pastor Brad Drew, and he did an amazing job on these reflections. So get ready. The Lord is coming. Make Get your house cleaned up because he's near. Uh, get rid of that old stuff and those old sins and and start fresh with a new church year, a new year, a new day. Um, and, and, and that tells us we need a Savior. Because if we got something to clean up, then we need someone to clean it up for us. If we have something that we need, if we realize that our lives are not clean all by themselves, if we realize that we don't have everything together, if, if, if the Lord repents us, then we realize the first thing we need is that we need to be repented. We need to be saved, which is why the baby is coming. Now, one thing we need to repent of, which we see today, is, is, is the idea that when God and Satan go at it, it's, it's, it's sort of an even match. Uh, that uh, uh, This was sort of like um, this weekend, LSU played uh, 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 Texas A&M. Texas A&M won. Um, LSU played awful. Had LSU played good, they, they might have beaten the number five team in the nation. Um, if they'd have played well. Um, that's not the way it is with God. If Satan plays well, he's not going to beat God. He could play his best, and he's still God's still going to run circles around him. And so, um, the idea that God allows something to happen, and that somehow rescues God from being evil, that's not what's going on. Everything that um, everything that the devil does. Everything that the devil does, everything, that, every, everything, we toys see everything, everything that the devil does, God runs circles around him. So this authority is given to you from above because the evil that they're doing is all part of God's plan to save you. He's going to take the evil that we do and he's going to take the evil that the devil does and he's going to turn it just like he did for Joseph and he's going to turn it and use it to save us. That's what's going on here. And so it's not that God's like sit passive, like I'm not participating in this. You know, he's like uh, Hogan's Heroes. I hear no evil. I see no evil. Uh, he, he, not, that's not what's going on. What's going on here is that God is so your God. And he is so for you. And he is so good all the way through that he even takes every evil of the devil, the world, and your own sinful flesh, and he uses it to save you. And that's what you need to think of when you're thinking of, of the evil that's gone on in your life. How God's going to repent you and use the evil that you've done in order to save you and save others. So you think that it's you versus the world and you have to get your stuff together or else. And you do uh, have to get to, uh, I see nothing, I hear nothing. Uh, you do have to, I, I got that wrong. I, uh, um, I got it right now. There you go. Um, but you do have to. Give me three days off and I'm going to be a little scatterbrained. I'm, I'm sorry. I, I'm just get, getting my game back. I'm getting my game back. Um, and, and so you get this moment where, where this is something you need to repent of. God's going to even take your evil and use it for good. I, he's going to save you because that's the kind of God he is. On the manger, in the manger, on the cross, and on the altar. Everything he does, he does to save you. I'm thirsty. Are you thirsty? I think it's... Um, it's cold here in Shreveport. Uh, it got below 30, and that never happens. And so um, the heats are running. And although I got used to it um, in uh, in McHenry toward toward the end of my service there, um, I'm still um, I'm still sort of 
I, I never got used to the um, um, I never got used to the, the the dryness, so it makes me thirsty. So you have no authority over me unless it has been given to you from above. Therefore, he who delivered you over to me has the greater sin. So the the real sin rests with the Pharisees, the scribes, the high priests, and Judas. That's where the real sin rests in, in the evil that's done to Jesus. Now, also, um, us, because make no mistake about it, do not doubt that if you had an opportunity, you'd take the 30 pieces of silver. How do I know this? Um, how do I know this? Well, um, you sell him out for far less than 30 pieces of silver every single day. Every single day. Every single day. Daily and much. At least you confess it. From then on, out of that, because of this, Pilate sought to apolusai, um, to release him. But the Jews cried out all the more, if you release him, you are not filios to kaisas saros. You're not a friend of Caesar. Everyone who makes themselves out to be a king is an enemy of Caesar, speaks against Caesar. All right. Anti lege. Um, anti Christ. Anti lege. Speaks against. Now they've ratcheted it up a little bit. Now they've invoked Pilate's boss. Now they're invo invoking Augustus, the emperor of the known world. So if you let this man go, you're no friend of Caesar's. And I want you to sort of take this in for a second. How evil we are. How evil we are. Just sort of contemplate this for just, just a hot minute. I was looking for something to wrap my finger, but I can't find it. Um, <coughs> we are so evil that we will, we will get with people we hate in order to God, to get God. A diffuser with or without EO can help too. EO, EO, Eastern Orthodox? Bobby Joe, I don't want any Eastern Orthodox in my house. I've made it funny. I do like Eastern Orthodox people, I'm just, I'm just joking. Um, They don't like Caesar. They want out of Caesar's rule. They want to overthrow Caesar, but they'd rather Caesar than this guy. Oh, essential oils. I see. Okay. 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 I thought you were, you know, how am I going to put an Eastern Orthodox into a uh, diffuser? If I did that, would they become a Lutheran? Get that, uh, we'll get that diffusing um, of that, uh, 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 He became like us so that we would become like him. That, that's 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 not that's 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 not helpful. Um, the uh, um, we would we would we would go with people we hate, other than to have Jesus as our God. All right, any God but you, not Jesus. And so look at this. They're on the side of Caesar. We're on the side of Caesar, opposed to anti lege against Jesus. Against Jesus. 
against Jesus. Anyone but Jesus. Think about it. Think about it. Think about it for a second. Think about that. They want, um, they want Jesus dead so much. They're friends of Caesar. Think about that. Just, just think about that for a second. So when Pilate heard those words, he uh, had Jesus brought out, brought out Jesus, and sat on, um, this is an interesting, the judgment seat in the, in the place which is called um, uh, the stone pavement, which is in Aramaic, Gabbatha. So, um, this is the, this is important, okay? Um, when he sits on that chair, He is Caesar. That is a specific seat. When he sits on that chair, he's Caesar. I used to call the, uh, the when I was a young Latin student, I would, I would say that uh, when I had to go to the bathroom, I was going to go and sit on the Stella Curialis, which is the seat of power. Um, uh, when you, when he sits down there, so so they invoke Caesar, they invoke his boss, and he's like, okay, I'm going to sit down here, and I'm going to be Caesar for you. Okay, this is not one of, so they they, you know, they escalated it, and now he's going to escalate it, and it's going to escalate quickly. It's going to escalate quickly. You think I'm against Caesar? I am Caesar for you. I am the hand of Caesar for you. And so he sits down on the seat, the judgment seat, and now he's Caesar. I want you to sort of take this in for a second. All of recorded history has been moving towards steadily this moment. Every, every Bible study we've done, everything that we've done, all of it, that's my wallet, all of it has been moving steadily toward this moment where Jesus stands before Pilate. Now we know why, why everything has happened in, in history up to this point. We know why the Greeks conquered um, m most of the known world. We know why and spread their language and made their language everywhere. We know why the Romans conquered them. And the Pax Romana, the, the, the period of peace, we know why everything in recorded history has happened up until this moment where Pilate is judging Jesus. All of it has been moving so that this would happen to save you and me. Nothing happens accidentally. You don't miss the light because it's just an accident. God is working through your missed light to do good for others and for you. That is the way of faith. So this moment, this second, this microcosm in history is actually the point in which God has been moving everywhere where he would stand before men and be judged by men. What an upside down, upside down. Whoa, you turned me. What an upside down moment. Round and round, baby. It's round and round. It's messed up that now God is being judged by men and he's being found wanting. Not enough. He isn't enough. 
He isn't enough. Not enough God. Ooh, I turned my mic off. Oops. Sorry. I inadvertently hit the mic. I was trying to move the mic closer to me because um, we're getting uh, a new sign put in today at church. We're going to participate in the light pollution on Ireline Highway. Um, I just hit mute. I got it fixed. I got it fixed. Um. I'll, I'll back up a little bit. What kind of show are you running here, Borkart? Um, let's back it up a little bit. I'll get you. I'll get you. Count up. Now it was the day of preparation for the Passover. It was about the sixth hour, about noon. And he said to him, Today, ha basileus humen, behold your king. Behold your king. And they cried out. They screamed, Aaron, Aaron, uh, away with him, away with him, crucify him. And Pilate said to them, shall I crucify your king? And the chief priests answered. I should mourn this. The chief priests answered, Uk Echomen Basile A Me Kaisara. We have no king but Caesar. They all wanted a king to, to slay their foes and lift them high. Thou camest a little baby thing that made a woman cry. Israel wanted a king in the Old Testament. They wanted, they wanted, they wanted what the nations had. Uh, they wanted someone who would ride in the front of the army, someone who would, um, uh, all I can think of is that Christmas thing. It's great to be in the army. Um, they wanted. They wanted what everyone else had. And when Samuel came to them and said, "This is a bad idea. If you get a king, he'll take your daughters and make them his wives. He'll take your um, uh, your your sons and make them his soldiers. He will tax you, and he will. This is a bad idea." But they wanted a king. And God said to, to Samuel, don't fret. Give them what they want. They're not rejecting you. They're rejecting me. They don't want me as their king. And that seemed a little bit extreme until this moment. They don't want Jesus as king. They don't want God as their king. They want Caesar as their king. Anything to get rid of this Jesus. Anything to undo what he has done. That's from White Christmas. You got it, Bobby Joe. Um uh, now you're now you're getting all the Christmas stuff I'm watching. I'm daring to be Lutheran and being free enough to to watch some Christmas shows before. 
And so he handed them over to them to be crucified. Now, here's an interesting thing. This is the same verb that um, that Jesus used earlier to say, the one who handed me over um, have the greater sin. So Pilate gives them what they want. No king but Caesar. Pilate gives them everything they wanted, a dead Jesus. Okay? A dead Jesus. All right. Before we go, two things. One, tomorrow is Giving Tuesday. And I want you to do two things for me. Okay? I'm the worst spokesman for an organization because, one, I'm going to tell you to remember your church. So you give to your church. You know, you don't have to give to stuff going on in Uruguay. Um, you can if you want. You're free to do that. But remember first to give to your church. Your church needs your offerings in order to continue the preaching of the gospel in your midst. So often we think that, 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 that mission work needs to go out there, but your church is doing mission work right in your community. And so you need to give to your church tomorrow on Giving Tuesday. And in addition to that, I would ask that you give to the greatest youth organization in the known world, Higher Things, which makes this Bible study possible. Um, and on Friday, I got a surprise for you on Friday. I got a surprise for you on Friday. You are going to be so happy on Friday. You're not going to believe what's going to happen on Friday. You're going to be like, really? There's no way. Friday, I got a surprise for you. But, um, but I want you to give today. Tax deductible, tax deductible gift to higher things keeps um, keeps this gospel in your ears and in your midst. All right, tomorrow we'll, we'll continue in John uh, chapter 19. Uh, we are finishing, we finished John, uh, we finished verse 16. Uh, all of six verses in 30 minutes. Top speed. Have a blessed day and I will see you right on time tomorrow.